Why do so many good sounding horrors just have to add in a supernatural element? This movie could have explored so much more if it just stayed grounded. Very quickly, if you are new here, I like to cover those movies that get less talked about and less reviewed, really just to try and understand either why or try and find some hidden gems for both myself and maybe recommend to you guys. So if you are new, please do hit subscribe. It lets me know that you're enjoying this type of content. That being said, on with the review. Uma. Uma is a new horror where we're following a mother and daughter for the movie. And the setup and premise of this film I thought was going to be very interesting and really explore a mother's headspace dealing with her own childhood and her own trauma. So we've got Amanda, the mother, and a daughter, Chris. Now through the intro to the movie and through certain flashbacks, what we learn is that Amanda was just tortured as a child. Her mother was not good to her. Really fucking horrible actually when you see what happened. And this has left her with a lot of issues and certainly PTSD and certainly struggles with the memories of her childhood and her mother. It's clear that she's difficult to get a hold of. I mean she has travelled across the globe to America to just escape her family, she's changed her name. She's really just trying to start a new life here. Now her and Chris, they live out in the middle of nowhere and they've got this no electricity rule, very reminiscent of Chuck from Better Call Saul. Amanda just does not like to be around it because that was a form of torture that she had as a child. Her and her daughter get along very well. They're a really nice couple and they're both really good actresses as well. They play the parts fantastically and they themselves have a great chemistry. They are very believable as a mother and daughter duo and I bought into that so fast in this movie. The real only connection they have is a man called Danny who brings them supplies and the mother herself, she's a beekeeper, she sells her honey which, which Danny rocks up one day, tells her that some influencer has caught wind of it. So now that she's gone viral, there's a lot more money to be had here. So the setup to this is really good. We learn a lot of information, it's not all even through dialogue. You know when Danny rolls up in the house there's a sign telling them no electricity and he's turning off his equipment. So the script here is actually really solid but I feel like they took a shortcut by making it supernatural. What I thought was going to be the case and certainly as the movie put in its synopsis was that she's got the fear of kind of turning into her mother, which is a very real fear I know a lot of people have just becoming their own parents. This is amplified when her uncle comes just to let her know that her mum has now died, delivered the ashes and her kind of most prized possessions to the house. So this just brings everything back for her. All the whilst that she's dealing with this going on, she's caught wind that her daughter clearly wants to leave. I mean, she's in the middle of nowhere, she's homeschooled, she doesn't have friends. It's very understanding that her daughter wants to leave. And I will say that her daughter is probably the most understanding person that I've ever seen in a movie. I'll go into it a little bit more later. She really doesn't ask a lot of questions or much from her mum and just gets on with it. They do deal a little bit around the superstitions of death within our culture. So although her mum's escaped from it, she doesn't believe it, but that starts changing as the movie progresses here. What was a few instances of kind of flashbacks or her suffering from PTSD from this? That progressively gets more frequent as the film goes on and certainly as she's got her mum's ashes. You know, she locks everything away. She locked away all the electrical equipment and anything that she can associate to her past. And I would have loved to have seen a film here which really just went further into her fear of becoming her mum. But instead what happens is she is literally haunted by her mum. She's starting to see her face in various places and it goes beyond just a simple haunting and PTSD because for a few of the scenes I could have chalked it up to it's in her imagination but then it becomes into the physical world and you know people are getting moved around. Things are happening to people physically as a part of this haunting. And that is when you know the film has taken that leap beyond someone's own struggle internally to an actual actual outside force trying to take control. You know the film is quite slow paced and you know you expect that from a movie that delves into someone's headspace and their mental health. Not from a haunting movie. For one like that you expect maybe some jump scares in here, a lot of tension in scenes and a lot of investigation. And the movie for the first half, maybe two thirds, is a lot around slow pacing around her mental health. But it's just in that final bit that it turns into a real haunting movie and almost the whole style of the movie changes with what's getting shown and how it's depicted. It's very jarring to watch it and also a little bit disappointing for what they could have done. You know, maybe have the mum acting like her mother. Now, although we didn't see her mother in the movie, we only see her through flashbacks, we could quite easily understand if she's suddenly acting like somebody else. Maybe her PTSD and maybe her worst fears have gotten the better of her and that she is now becoming a mother to try and subdue those fears. Because it's all about 
respecting your elders, respecting your parents, and that they're always right. That's kind of the mentality here, although I've very simplified it. Look, that leads me into, I have questions. This is that section where I just want to talk about a couple of things that either will spoil the movie, or a few questions that I've got that could either spoil it or just take you out of the movie as well. Now, as I said, the daughter in here, Chris, she is fantastically understanding, but a lot more than I thought when the movie had first started. So they live with zero electricity. The mum is just not allowed around it. And I think that's as much as she's ever said to her daughter. They never explain what her reasoning is for this. You know, whether it's a health issue or anything else. What we also learn is that the mum has lied to Chris about where she came from. She's even told Chris about grandparents that aren't even her real grandparents. And Chris as well has never understood the struggle that her mum had as a child. She's never understood the, the torture she was put through or the abuse that she felt at the hand of her own mum. So when you think of that aspect, you've got to then ask the question, why is Chris so okay with having zero electricity around her, being homeschooled, and really been sheltered like this? Has she never asked? what the fuck is going on and why? Because her mum will have never explained the abuse side of it. And if it was a health thing, you really think Chris has never tested it? She's never had an electrical appliance on and seen that there was no effect? And also in a few of the mum's hauntings where she's seen her own mother's face or, you know, she's just struggling. She takes it out and when it cuts to, we realise that the body that was there was actually Chris. And Chris is the one that gets pushed down or Chris is the one that may be attacked in some way. Chris doesn't really question this. Obviously a little concern for her mum, but the movie doesn't go into a conversation around it, nor does Amanda discuss why the fuck she's done it to her daughter. We just kind of move on from this. I feel like while the acting was really good on both parts, Chris has a lot more to ask. She should have been asking questions her entire life, and especially when her own mom starts attacking her and then freaking the fuck out and not understanding why. You know, the half-truths that she's been getting fed her whole life don't answer all the questions. Yet, she seems like a happy kid with no resentment towards her mom whatsoever. She wants to leave, but even then, she's not really resenting her mom as much as just keeping it a bit of a secret while well, she's applying for colleges. Danny as well, the man that comes and supplies them with goods, and he just assumed that Chris knew the reason that her mom couldn't be around electricity. He must have been coming to this house since she was a child, and they've just went on an assumption this whole time, and it's never been brought up in conversation. I feel like all those questions just asked, if it wasn't for the fact that they made a supernatural spin on it, and made that the finale, those wouldn't have been relevant, or they could have written around those aspects. Look, that was just a few of the questions I had around this movie, and things that just stood out to me a little bit more. Well, this movie is fantastically acted, I cannot take that away from this movie. For what it is, the dialogue is really strong, it does just shift complete tones in the final act to the movie. The pacing as well. It's a very slow journey for the first couple of acts, which again, would have been more than fine with if it was a delve into someone's mental health and not just changing up the script to an actual haunting. I think the film looks beautiful as well. It is very nice to watch. The characters all have really nice chemistry, not just the mother and daughter here, but even Danny. Danny's got his niece, I believe it is. So there's all these kind of bonds taking place as well. Really enjoyed seeing that. But what could have been a standout movie for me ended up just finishing on quite a cliche and cookie cutter, haunting, ghost movie by the end. It was very disappointing watching Uma. I'd be saying this is a middle of the road, pretty cliche to the end. So if you have the time, you can go a lot worse than Uma. Now look, have you seen it? Do we agree or disagree? Please do let me know down below. And if you haven't yet, please do hit subscribe. It lets me know that you're enjoying this content. We'll have more coming out in the future. But thank you so much for watching.